Good day and welcome to Student Manager 101, Part 3 of 5. We're almost halfway through this. Registration. <laughs> the important thing, I, I always like the registrations. I will talk about that in a minute. But a uh, very important part, and we're going to get into it. So uh, thanks, everybody, for showing up for our third of five series. And Lori, if you'd give me the helm, I will take control. So. Very good. Well, again, thanks everybody for staying with us and uh, keeping with us for the series. Um, we're going to try to do this in 60 minutes, and so I, yeah, we don't have Candy Crowley moderating here, uh, but we'll try to keep. Uh, Lori's pretty close, so she's going to keep you in line. So uh, today's topics are all about registrations. Uh, so uh, we'll try to run through these uh, again, uh, 60 minutes, and we'll try to provide time at the end for questions. Um, again, I, I would be remiss to mention that uh, all of the stuff that basically I'm going to cover today, excuse me, got the hiccups, is available through the help guide. And we'll hit that uh, on the web. I actually don't have the web up. Let me just bring that up, uh, remind you once again about the online help that is available uh, from the student manager website, either under online help or when you're in Student Manager the program, the little red book up on your screen. So again, that is what is your reference after Lori and I get off the uh, webinar here. <clears throat> so uh, let's jump into adding registrations. Um, we have a poll for you. And again, there are multiple ways, as with most screens in Student Manager, to get somewhere. Uh, looking up a name and then clicking Add Registration looking up a course and then doing ad registration, or using the green binoculars, primarily used when you have existing names that you know are in the system, and then hitting the Add button on the registration screen. Lori, I believe you've got a poll for us. I sure do. Here we are. So please well, we'll select one. <laughs> Do you prefer to work from the names, course, or registration screen? Or does it matter to you? Wherever you're at, you just register people <laughs> willy-nilly all over the place? Or are you too new to have formed any habits? I almost they, put bad habits in there. Bad, no, 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 no. There really isn't a bad way. That, uh, and again, we can uh, discuss the options here. So we'll give you five, four, three, two, one. Very good. And do you want to share the results? Yep. Oh. 70% from the name screen. Yay. OK. All right. Well, again, I don't know that there's a bad way to do that. It's just uh, that uh, that is wherever we're at, add radius from the course screen. Uh, very good. And a few newbies. So, so that's OK. And again, um, uh, let me just let me just roll to the the program and uh, kind of indicate what we're talking about for the newbie newbies. So again, from the name screen, obviously if you're if you're in student manager and you add a brand new student, uh, you're going to be at the name screen. So that's understood for new people. Um, so the add registration button right from the name screen. Is my screen keeping up with you, Lori? Yeah, we have some momentary pauses there, but it seems to be doing well now. Uh, course registration. Not many people pick this. And uh, there is a way that you can, well, it's a way, right on the course screen, add it at Reggie's, you can add enrollments to a class. And one of the benefits of that, or one of the reasons for that is if you had several people to register for a class, uh, you can go into the add it at Reggie's, and at this point, then, you're in the register screen. And then you just keep hitting Add. And then it'll go look up a name, uh, add that name, look up another name, add that name. Uh, the benefit of that is that if you're doing group registration, which we'll talk about, um, that it automatically asks you to group if you want to group these people together. So that's for doing group registrations is a handy way to do it. And then the third way is through the edit registration mode. And this takes you into the names table. You find the person you want, the bunny. 
it'll put you at the last registration in their file, which actually is a good tip for editing existing registrations. Uh, using the green screen or the green screen, the green binoculars allows you to quickly look up and edit existing registrations. Uh, and then if you're adding a new one, the add button from the green screen will then add another registration to Mr. Le Bunny. Uh, De Bunny. Uh, so that is the, the process. Now, you'll note when I went in through the green screen, the green binoculars, when I left the registration, it rolled me back to the name lookup again, so that if I had multiple edits to do on registrations, I stay in the lookup name, get the registration, lookup name, get to registration. I'm hitting escape to back out of this. All right, Lori, we're clear. All right. Good. Uh, so options abound. Um, clicking any action button saves the registration. So again, like the other data screens in Student Manager, pretty much any action button on here except uh, delete, or no, except undo, abandon, or X, or escape, uh, will save any work that you've done in the registration record, which is a good thing. Uh, source code, tracking code, uh, that's a big, big, big one, uh, in my opinion, which is where you ask the student, or you have your system set up, so that you know what marketing efforts or what promotion venues or what prompted this particular person, Kevin Costner, to take this EMT class. <clears throat> now, show of hands, uh, I think you guys are familiar with this. Raise your hand if you have, uh, if you use the tracking code on registration. So uh, again, if you would raise your hand if you're using the tracking code to track registrations. All right, guys, I'm seeing lots of hands. That makes me happy. That is great. And again, um, in my opinion, unless you have an unlimited marketing budget, you'll want to try to track your tra do your marketing tracking. And Lori, I believe we've got a webinar in the webinar archives on that if you'd like more information. And absolutely, we've got reports under statistics that will report that for you. Thanks, folks. Um, registration details. Um, looking at the bottom of your registration screen, uh, you'll note that the date added, updated, update time, add time, uh, created by, updated by, is all handled automatically for you. Um, moving on through the rest of the fields. Status field, registrant, again, um, you can edit those. If you want to monitor a status of a registration, one thing to note, brand new, is that now you can choose to make this a open entry field. In the past, it always had to be a validated field. You had to pick, you had to create options, uh, you know, guest, panelist, speaker, and pick one. Now, if you just want an open entry character field, you can uh, enable it to do that. Uh, and again, that's in, in registration preferences. Um, reg code, miscellaneous code, again, user definable fields set up in preferences uh, for tracking information about your registrations. Um, and again, all fields with a plus to the left of them uh, are ones that you can control the data drop downs in those fields. And in the, I think everything except the paid by, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, can be edited by you. Paid by is handled pretty much automatically by the system. You may edit it, but based on the name in the payment screen, it will put in either R for, um, what is that? P for participant, F for, for the firm, which would be if a person has a company name tied to the name record, or O for other, if it's neither the person or a person's firm. And that gives you a way to kind of track uh, where your money is coming from in terms of who's covering your, your fees for conferences or, or for, for registrations. Okay, what about the empty blanks? You knew ACEWARE doesn't leave any space unturned. Well, that's done in preferences. 
And these two fields happen to be turned off in my preferences on the course screen or on the registration screen. But those are date fields, which would be course must be completed by, which is typically used for independent study or maybe an online class, and then a actual course completion date uh, that you can track. Uh, again, generally that's used in online programs. I'm going to go ahead and roll to uh, the student manager preferences screen. Again, uh, either edit preferences or the preferences tag on the name screen takes you to preferences. We want to go to register. And again, here you see where you can turn fields on and off. Um, you can relabel, repurpose some of these fields. Uh, there is a registrar mode, which allows you to reduce the number of fields that are on the screen for uh, registration staff, uh, system behavior preferences. Um, use uh, this new feature, bill pay, reg type. Uh, again, these are uh, options if you, again, are new to the system and haven't reviewed this, even if you're a long-time user. Go back and relook at this, because in the last year we've added more options, we've added more things you can do with the system, uh, and it's always good to double-check preferences, especially now, like 7.2a is out, to make sure that you are taking advantage of all the latest and the greatest items. Um, OK. Um, and again, uh, Lori uh, will, will tell you, if you've got questions, write them in the text box, send them to Lori. I'll ask Lori about a burning question, but generally we, we try to save those to the end. Any burning, anything burning right now, Lori? Uh, Lynn wants to know about the green options. Knows about the black and blue, but wants to know about the green options. The green option, and I got to look at that here. Oh, that is this registrar mode option. And the registrar mode, when you are setting up a person in the, 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 the preferences table, and primarily it's like if you have staff uh, set to registrar only mode, if you were to set up a user as registrar only mode, then basically, so again, you'll, you'll note I went into Tools, Password Maintenance to go look at a uh, password setup uh, settings for one of the users for Student Manager. One of the options here is Registrar Only Mode. Again, I would, I would go reference that in the Help Guide for more information or check with your tech. But that basically, when you set that up for Registrar Only Mode and you go to Preferences, you can choose to basically turn off most of the other data fields on the registration screen, except for the fields that you say enable in registrar mode. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with this. Part of this idea is that if you're doing a brand new registration, you're typically not going to enter a grade. You're not going to enter the date that the certificate was issued because you're just registering them. Uh, so again, it turns off a bunch of fields like canceling them or waitlisting them. It turns things off uh, on uh, adding a virgin registration. And it basically kind of just simplifies the, the look of the screen. And you can experiment with that with a demo. Again, as uh, we've always said, if you're wanting to experiment with some of the things that we've talked about in the webinars, go to the ACEWARE website, download a demo, put it somewhere on a machine that you don't get confused with your live system. And typically, you'll see Chuck Havlicek and Mel Gibson and Barack and, and Mitt and, and these funky people in the system. But then you can play with the settings on that and just see how that works, whether that's something you want to implement for your live system. OK, good good question. Anything else, Lori? That's it for now. Right now? All right. Um, moving on. <clears throat> Grade CEUs hours. Again, uh, we've talked about that. These, these numbers, grades, or CEUs hours and credits, if it's turned on, come from the course screen, uh, where you've set it up in the course. Uh, and, but they can be edited at the registration level, so that if you've got 
um, someone who doesn't complete all of the class, you can uh, edit those numbers to reflect that appropriately. While we're talking about editing the CEUs and the hours and the, and the grade, let me remind you that when you're in a class, and I'm going to get out of here and get back to a class, 12F, if you have edit ability for registrations, uh, you can go to a class, click on student list, and actually have the ability to edit. I have, I have edit ability on registration. So I can edit CEUs, registration code, MISC, credits, grade, and hours. So I can go in and say, well, uh, Barack and Willard really didn't attend all of this because they've been prepping for those debates. So they're only going to get 0.8 CEUs. And again, they only get two credits, and they're getting C minuses because of attendance. And again, hours, they only attended eight hours. You can actually edit those hours right here on the uh, C minus. Got to play fair here, 2.0, and eight hours. So you can edit those without having to go to the individual registration record and doing the edit, which is, of course, always on the table. Uh, when I close this screen, if you'll kind of watch the upper right-hand corner, it'll say, two records updated. Uh, and that's a quick way to do CEUs, hours, and grades editing. All right. Next, uh, these one key wonders. Uh, when you're in the registration screen and a student says, well, can you tell me about the description for this course? You did catalog. If you need to go to the name record and do any data changing, uh, the, the student says, oh, by the way, I have a new phone number or my email has changed. Uh, can you edit that? You've got one click to take you there. And then the roster, which is show who else is in the class, um, is um, always available. A uh, show of hands. All right, all right kids. Um, I'm going to make everybody's hands go down. Raise your hands if you have clicked on the show roster on a registration in the past month. In the past month, have you used that show roster? All right, there are some in there. Very good. Very, oh, great. Well, I was hoping. I, I, I would think that'd be a useful element. All right. Um, let's keep going. Oh, C also, before we leave, leave that. <clears throat> the C also is the reference for, uh, in the catalog system, you can indicate related courses so that you can cross-sell. Uh, you can, you can, as a program manager, define in the course classes that are similar to this one, and when you're doing a registration, uh, hit the C also and say, by the way, Mr. Clinton, we also have a credit card management in Student Manager. Would you like to take that also? So you can, again, try to sell more, uh, more soup when they're walking into the store. All right, who approved this registration? Uh, this is new in the last year or so, uh, but the idea is that this allows you to link to another name in the names table and be able to track like an approving supervisor. Um, so again, uh, a way to help track information about your registration. And you'll note this is on under the um, the additional info uh, the additional info tab on the uh, registration screen. All right, keeping going. Uh, new item again: the add time. Uh, that we've had an add time for a name record, but we've never done one on the register. Well, this is new in 7.2. Um, all right, um, ready to move to grouping. Anything burning that you want to cover right now, Lori? Nope, we're good. All right, get my little pointer back with me here. So, um, why do you group registrations? Um, again, um, you can have one person enrolling in several courses and wants to make a single payment. Now again, it could be cash check, doesn't they have to be credit card, but the point is one person registering in several courses. The other one, uh, several people from a company. Uh, we talked about that's one of the benefits of if you went in from course and did add edit registration, uh, you can automatically group multiple employees uh, into one 
group for payment purposes. And again, uh, the company wouldn't have to pay for them. They could bill all these uh, seven registrations, although we've talked about if you're doing billings, you really don't need to do grouping. Uh, so the company paying for it with a check or paying for it with a credit card, um, that would be a way to do that. And then uh, you might have a group where a third party is registering people. Uh, two or more children from the same family, um, or a husband and a spouse, or the brother-in-law. You got the brother-in-law working on get a job, so he moves out of your house. Um, you basically can, multi can can bring multiple individuals that aren't necessarily related in any way uh, together and make a payment for them. <clears throat> so, uh, and as we as we mentioned, if you're using company invoicing, um, you don't really need to group registrations. Now. I'm going to back up and do a show of hands again. So here we go, guys. Hands down. Raise your hand if you do grouping of registrations. If you have grouped registrations, raise your hand. All right. I see Tisha's in with the program. Bunch of people. Good. I, again, if you're doing multiple registrations, I would think that uh, groupings would be handy. All right. And so we talked about billing. We'll talk about that more later. Um, how grouping works, um, again, I'm going to um, get into the actual, make sure um, that we will do an example of this uh, from the system. So <clears throat> I'm going to stay with student manager. Eh, I'm not going to stay with student manager. I'll go somewhere who we don't have so many people in here. One of the other things that we'll note is that if you go in through the course screen, uh, whether the class is active or not, uh, it will let you add registrations from the course screen. So again, I'm going to uncheck active, hit save, hit add edit registrations, and I'm going to start adding people to this class. So I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to go to uh, Mr. Romney here, our buddy. And again, it, there's a warning now, even though the course is not active, it does warn you. Do you want to add? Yes, I want to do that. So I've added one person in this class. Now I'm going to add another person in this class. And you'll note, even though I'm in the green screen, because I came into this from Add Edit Registrations, or Add Edit Regis, hitting the Add button now takes me to a name lookup because I'm bringing a name to this class. So I'm going to add Mr. Obama, uh, special needs note. It asks me again, is it active? Yes, I do. And now here's the grouping question. You are adding a new registration for Barack. You want to group it? Yes, we do. So now as we do that, um, the new screen shows up, a new part of the registration screen, which shows the groups. How, how much is this group that I'm building? What is the shopping cart that I'm creating? And at the top, it tells me uh, the number of people in my group. Now, I can go on. If I wanted to go back and actually get George W. to this, I'll just keep on going. B-U-S-H, of course, not active, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, now I've got three. I've got the three amigos here, Barack, Willard, and George W. <clears throat> now, the beauty of it is that when you make a group, you now can make one payment and cover the payment for the entire group at one time. Uh, so again, if this is the presidential uh, debate commission that's going to pay for this, uh, we're going to say, all right, they're paying for this with a credit card. And of course, uh, at this point, the payment gateway would be live, and you'd go to the payment gateway. Now note, when you're doing a group, the default name for the payer is the last person in the group that you add. You said, so if the first person is really picking up the tab, uh, if that was going to be Mitt, it's going to just pull in his pocket and grab out nine, 900 bucks to pay for this, you should have added Mitt as the last person in the list. Now, because of the tools that we've got, <clears throat> find firm, find name, it's really easy for you to go in, look up a name, the presidential commission. Well, I don't have that in there. So I'm going to hit escape and go back. And I'm going to look up Mr. Romney again, Governor Romney. I pull up his name, and I pop in his, his address or the address of his bank account. 
But the point is, you can reference the name, you can reference the firm, you can actually type in a brand new name, presidential uh, debate, and whatever address you want, <clears throat> and be able to put that into the payer name. Uh, final comment about the payment situation is that there is an additional notes area. Uh, you've got a pay note on the main screen. You have an alternate validated uh, or an option to validate option for additional info related to uh, a payment. And you have additional notes, a big pay notes field. These two here, transaction ID, ACE Web session ID, of course, relate to transactions via ACE Web. If you have ACE Web and people are enrolling online, <clears throat> ACE Web writes a serial number to these to help you track those down with your payment gateway as you're moving through. OK, uh, finally then, clone pay detail. Uh, again, I have not made any payments. I guess I have been looking at payments here. If you had been making payments along today and you open up the mail and here comes another payment where Aceware Systems is sending somebody to a program. Oh, I love that Aceware Systems. Well, if you had last used uh, Aceware Systems as the payer, uh, if you hover over the pay detail, it will show you the, the, the snapshot or, if you would, the clipboard of the last payment information that was ever done you hit the clone pay detail, and it'll pop that into this particular payment record. Um, OK, we've done a lot of questions, or a lot of elements here. I'm going to pause a second for questions. While we're doing that, though, I'm going to ask, so write your questions down for Lori. I'm going to have everybody drop their hand. Raise your hand if you have ever used the clone payment detail. So I want to know if you have used clone pay detail. Raise your hand if you've ever done that. <clears throat> All right. Eh, don't see many people doing that. All right. Um, I'm going to raise I'll lower the hands. Raise your hand if you think that might be handy, if you think you might want to use that. I'm, I'm begging for, for some love in here, guys. Come on. Raise your hand. Ah, oh, we've got thank you, Alfreda. Hey, I've got a couple people. All right. The point is, is that if you are doing payments uh, and, and you've got the last one in there, Rather than retyping it, you can do the clone. Lori, questions? How are we doing? Anything hot? You want to hold them? We're going to hold them till the end. All right. So we'll keep on a moving here. <clears throat> Back to the show. Fees and payments. I've kind of rolled into that ahead of time. I guess I've kind of went into grouping and, and finished off with fees and payments. So let's kind of recalc and see if there's anything here that we haven't covered. Uh, first of all, Remember, course fees, when we're talking about a fee on a registration, I didn't change that when I was doing the example. They're set on the main screen. <clears throat> so you would go to the course side and set up the, uh, the fees. Uh, the other thing is that you must pick, you, you, you have a choice of fees when you're staff and you're entering registrations. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run the live on that real quick. <clears throat> uh, we'll OK save that. I've already now made the payment. Everything's paid off. This is what we're talking about, that if you have fees set up in the course, the drop-down will allow you to choose the alternate fees that are set up for this particular class. All right, back to the idea of assigning fees. One of the other options that you've got in Manager is that you can set a fee preference. And that is on the name screen. If everything's showing, you ought to see the name screen now. Down there is an option called Use Fee Category. If you pick a fee descriptor on the name screen, staff fee, alumni fee, a senior citizen fee, <clears throat> and you have created a fee description like that on the class, you can automatically have, when you enroll Chuck in this class, he will get assigned whatever is the fee category that's in his name record. And so again, that is one of the options that uh, you can do for uh, special populations in your group. All right, 
adjustments to fees. Um, uh, guys, I've been in continuing ed for a long time, and uh, I, it's, there's nothing final generally about fees when you're a continuing educator because you're always looking for a way to add that other registration. How can we get? How can we close the deal? How can we get this person to enroll? And so, you know, uh, Bill comes in and says, you know, I'd love to go to this course, but I have to leave on the last day because my daughter's wedding that weekend, and. Oh, I don't want to pay the full price because it'll only be a yeah, wine, wine, wine. How can I get a break? So that allows you, through the fee adjustment description, to be able to make an adjustment in the amount of the fee. Now, a um, couple of things about that. One of the new things about fee adjustment is that you can add a quantity. Uh, and again, in even adding a registration fee, from the uh, course screen. You can add the quantity. Turning on that quantity is an option. It's now a optional preference that you can set via preferences <clears throat> and where that is under preferences now. Registration preferences, it's right over here. It's kind of tucked in next to the package fee. Use other fee quantity. I don't know if Matthew's listening, but I want to get him to push a little space there so it doesn't look like that's all connected. But the idea, this is where you turn on the issue of how many optional fee elements or entities that you want with um, a registration uh, with an optional fee. And again, if you really don't have a case where you've got uh, like parking, uh, if you're mainly using it for parking permit and you don't buy multiple parking permits, uh, you can turn it off and just not have that uh, show on your on your registration screen. Lori, do I think that covers that? I think so. Thank you. All right. So uh, adjustments to fees again, <clears throat> uh, they can be a negative or a positive, and then again, one-time adjustment reason. Uh, in the past, we've always had a validated option for the fee adjustment. And again, you can't turn off validation completely. But let's go look up a registration now. I'm going to get out of this group and go to Singleton here. Add edit Reggie's, and we're going to go find Bill Clinton. OK, Bill is in a standard, uh, standard class. So uh, normally, if I wanted to adjust his fee, Bill's the one complaining about that fee. He has to be gone. Can he adjust the fee? So if you click on coupon adjustment and you say additional charge, cancellation, uh, credit, coupon adjustment, scholarship credit, eh, I don't really see one for a whiny attendee uh, or uh, you know conflict, partial adjustment. So you'll note now that if I hover over this fee, it says to toggle between validated and open entry, press Alt plus the number 4. So if I'm in the field, hold the Alt key down and press the number 4, voila, that fee adjustment is now open entry. I can type whatever I want to do. You are a whiny student. Adjustment. Adjustment. I have to edit that. And I didn't put in the dollar amount. Uh, let's try it. You are a whiny. And so I got to get over. I tabbed out of that without putting in a dollar amount. And you'll note it, it didn't put it up there. So I'm going to put in minus 50 bucks. So that drops in the you are a whiny student, uh, the date, and the amount. Um, obviously, you might want to be a bit more discreet as to what you name that. But the point is, it allows you the freedom to put in an item on the line. OK. Um, let me see on additional charges here. The other thing about additional charges is that if there are additional charges at the class level, uh, clicking additional charges brings them up, supplies, uh, adds that. Now, um, all right, uh, Lori, uh, yeah, we're in and out. Um, any quick questions on adjustments or the fee adjustment item that we just illustrated? 
guys. Uh, Krista wants to know, does the whiny student adjustment show up on the receipt? Yes, it does. So that's a good point. That's what I said about being discreet. Whatever you type in on that is typically the adjustment that shows on the receipt. It shows on the confirmation. So yeah, you've got to be a bit more di uh, diplomatic than uh, you are a whiny student. You would you know, put in something that is politically correct because that does show up. That, that is public. How about on the invoice? Yes. Uh, again, uh, invoices, well, I, again, now let me say, remember, you always have the option to create a custom receipt or a custom invoice that might just have additional charge total and not show the detail. But I would be real careful about not putting in insulting or nasty or what you would think to be private notes in that because so many of the details on that are generally in a public display. Yeah. Okay. Lynn says, we give our college staff half price for classes as long as there's space in the class. Is this a good place to cash out the huh. I Well, yeah, I would. I think this would be as good a place as any. Now, of course, the other option is if you have enough staff taking a class that you would put a fee description up in here, staff rate, and you'd put um, you know, $150, one of the advantages of putting in fees that are common, that, that happen fairly often, and let me jump back to the course. I'm going to jump back to the course. The advantage of putting in a fee like that that is, uh, comes in fairly often member price, uh, you know, staff price. We don't, do we have staff price? We don't have staff price. So I'm going to add a main fee of staff, 150 bucks. And yes, we want to hide that from the web. Is that when you go in and run statistical reports, there is a statistical report, and I've got to close a couple of things here. Uh, there is a statistical report names demographic summary, where you can say, give me the fee description. Do, 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 do. Registration fee description. And you can run your nice statistical analysis based on the description of the fee that you've assigned to students in that class. Um, so that's, that's one of the advantages of using uh, the uh, uh, using the fee descriptions for that. But if you don't have that many of those, you only have twosies, threesies, uh, then rather than creating those on the course screen, absolutely, you can uh, put in, uh, only I would put in a, um, uh, I would create a descriptor. That's always, you know, staff discount. And so that when you're, when you're putting that on the fly, you can put in staff discount. You just have to do ma your manual math on that. Um, although I'm trying to think now. Doesn't the new staff discount, uh, that would be, no, you'd have to uh, set that up, of course, minus 150. And again, you could, um, you can run a report under, I have to close this now. You can run a report under registration counts of optional fees to be able to show you how many people use the staff discount. So there are other ways of being able to get counts of that. Um, that was a long answer to a short question, but I, I wanted to make sure there were some other ways you knew uh, how to do that. Other questions that, that are related you want to deal with? No, nope, we're doing fine for now. All right. Um, back to the shoe. Uh, oh, wow. show of hands, show of hands. How many people have used Alt F4 to put in an, a, a type on the fly fee description? Anybody do that? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't see anybody. Sally, all right, we got, got a couple. All right, very good, very good. All right, um, how we do time ways? Good. Uh, show me, get me the money. All right, registration screen is all well and good, but it's only half of the story. The registration fee, is, <laughs> registration screen, is basically where you're defining the amount that the student owes you. 
So you put in the fee, you put in the adjustments, you, uh, you indicate the quantity of what you're buying, and then payments is where you collect the money. So again, the payments button is the, is the big one. Uh, we kind of went through that a minute ago. Lori, remind me to talk about group uh, or the, the number of seats in the class. All right. Uh, payment type. When you are in a payment screen, uh, the thing to kind of watch for is your information up at the top, adding payment, editing payment. Uh, Lori will highlight this later. On a Virgin registration, when you hit uh, payment info, it automatically assumes you're going to want to add a payment. And it puts you in a void status, which says you haven't told us how you're going to pay. So <clears throat> you go in and pick the payment type. Uh, and again, note about the default amount that's owed. The default amount is always the total due for the class. But again, you can modify that. You can change that. A couple other things. Note, you can make multiple payments. Each different payment for a single registration can be a different method. You can pay part by uh, payment, pay part by billing. You can make payments by different people. And we've shown you earlier, you can use the links. Firm name, uh, look up firm, look up name, clone previous <clears throat> payment status uh, to bring that in. And of course, you can add notes. Payment details, uh, you fill in the blank. Uh, you'll note down here the other categories. You can set up to six different payment methods. You can define them uh, based on what types of methods you might use at your institution. And that is set up under Preferences Payment tab. And then when you're finished putting in the payment detail, uh, you can, uh, rather than hitting uh, OK close and going back to the registration screen, there is a one button, if you would, checkout, uh, which is print receipt and close will save the payment and push you to the spot where you print the confirmation for the student. And so that's a, a one button does all uh, kind of an element there. And this is that caution note. Uh, multiple payments, if, especially if you are going back to edit a registration that already exists and where you might have already had a payment, you've got to make sure if you're adding a new payment to hit the Add button because otherwise you're basically editing or changing the existing payment. <clears throat> and I think I can illustrate that if I go in and I'm going to get back to a classic lookup. I'm going to look up Mr. Blow. I'm going to click on edit for a registration. I'm going to find a registration where there's a payment maybe on record. Uh, well, here's one that's payment. Uh, when you go into the payments button now, <clears throat> you'll note at the top it tells you we're now in edit mode on this payment, and there is one total payment on the record. So if I was really wanting to add a payment now for this person, and I thought, I'm going to make this a cash. First of all, there are several warnings that go on. Do you want to change a payment to have an existing payment? You say, wait a minute, I'm adding. I mean, uh, no, no. So then you want to hit the Add button. <clears throat> and now we've got uh, the option here to uh, create the new payment to, to pay off this particular record. Um, OK, I'm going to roll back now. To, I'm going to add a new registration for Mr. Blow now into one of the 12S Chuck's webinar class. Now, um, one of the things that is possible, and I didn't talk about this, is that there is the option to be able to say, how many seats does Joe Blow want to buy for this webinar class? And typically here it is that Joe wants to send three people to this class but he doesn't know the other names of the two staff he wants to send. It could be Lori, it could be Matthew, it might be AJ. So he says, but I want to hold three seats. So you can type in a quantity. Staff can type in a quantity. It will multiply the dollar amounts. 
and you can make that payment and then later on go in and edit that registration and then assign it to individual people. Um, don't have time to get into the detail of that. I believe that is covered in the, in the help guide. So again, you can go to the help guide and look at <coughs> registering multiple seats uh, in a class. I wanted to make sure we covered that. All right, Lori, questions, things going on? We're going to get into billing record. We're going to hold till the end. Good enough. All right, well, let's keep on moving. Uh, billing record option. Now, uh, what that does is creates a record for invoicing purposes and tracking, but this registration does not become part of the class roster. It does not become part of a uh, enrollment count. <clears throat> and again, I've talked about that. The, the big deal here is that if you want to have a name in the database, you want to have a name in your, in your student manager, <clears throat> you want to have a name in the database, but that you don't have that person actually enrolling in classes, but he might be the training director, she might be the director of the uh, payroll or the uh, accounts payable department, and you want to put their name down as the person to whom this invoice is going to go. Uh, when you add a registration, and that's typically done in contract programs. Let's go to Acme Customer Service Training. I may already have one in here. I'm going to go to Added Regis. Here you go. Teresa Alexander is marked as her registration is the billing record for this contract course for customer serving, which is, which is an in-house contract course. What happens when you do that? Well, what happens when you do that is that if I were to look at the enrollment count, there are three people in the class. When I go to Add Edit Regis, there are one, two, three, four names. Well, Teresa is marked as a billing only record, which means she does not get a enrollment count. So if I were to go to a roster report, quick reports, name roster, we should not see Teresa, one, two, three, Teresa's not on the roster. Um, and again, student list, there's the three registrants and we show Teresa, but she's listed as a status as the payor. So again, uh, that is a special option that uh, particularly handy if you're doing a lot of contract training. Okay, <clears throat> uh, payment plans. Uh, this is back to billings, is that if you've got those of you that have some high dollar programs, a CNA program for two or three thousand, an A-plus certification for seven thousand, a, uh, um, I don't know what you've got, welding program that might be a, a high dollar program, and you would like to let this student pay for this in installments. When you do a billing, there is an option down here on the pay screen called payment plan. <clears throat> and you can indicate installments for that. All right. Canceling a registration. <clears throat> um, if you have to cancel uh, or change, there are several options. You can cancel the registration, refund all or a portion or keep them back. You can cancel a registration, just keep the money. You can cancel a registration and transfer to escrow, or you can transfer the registration, to, again, to a different class, to a different participant. So again, multiple options uh, are for you. Um, if the payment has already, has, has already been made, <clears throat> now here's one, I said the payment, if no, if no payment has been made, someone's registered, uh, but they've never made a payment, then you really don't have to use any wizard. You just cancel the registration, and you'd put in a fee adjustment there to say canceled um, minus $95, and this registration is canceled. There were no payments to worry about. But when you're doing a, a cancellation or voiding a registration, the issue is you want to make sure that the total due uh, and the total paid result in a balance of zero. Uh, because if, if a registration is canceled, uh, you want to make sure that the balance due is zero because otherwise this registration will still be showing up as an outstanding account 
uh, when you're running deadbeat or some of the other financial reports. All right, uh, refund wizard. When you're at the payment screen, you'll see in the lower left a refund wizard. And that generally, where you're doing a canceling a registration that has uh, payments made, the best way to go is use the refund wizard because it allows you multiple options, refund a student, refund escrow. You can refund the total amount, fixed total. Uh, and it'll automatically, this is the nice part, it'll automatically cancel the registration for you and zero out the CEUs and hours. Uh, so again, that is it. I'm not going to do an example of that. Um, uh, we'll get to it if we've got time later. <clears throat> Transfers. The other option from the payment screen is transfer. And the big issue here might be that if, if you've moved this student from one class to another, you've transferred a registration from one class to another, and there might be an overpayment. Uh, well, the transfer payment allows you to transfer that leftover parcel to either escrow to a third party uh, uh, registration in the system. I believe that covers that. And again, the help mode, the help guide has some good uh, examples or some good tips on handling the uh, handling the uh, issue of, of transfers uh, and refunds. <clears throat> uh, both of those that we said, they're on the payment screen. Uh, transfer and the registration is drop-dead simple. Uh, you click the transfer button, you pick class, you pick student, and uh, proceed. And so there, there's really not much uh, change on that. Uh, the big deal at the end of that is, of course, if you're transferring from class to class, um, if there's a different fee amount that you've got to either add an additional charge for the additional fee, or you, as we mentioned, go into Refund Wizard and refund <coughs> the overpayment if, if they've got a going from a high dollar to a lower dollar class. OK. Uh, special case, uh, if you have a registration with a billing and that you're canceling that registration, you need to pay attention to that because billings in Student Manager are considered live and considered collectible unless you void them. So again, even if you have a student cancel a registration that's been billed, unless you void the billing or delete the old billing, your account's payable, your account's receivable will continue to show that as a live account. Uh, Matthew has added now a nice feature that if you're canceling a registration with a billing, it will ask if you'd like to void them as part of the process. So, all right, uh, billings. Speed registration. Uh, this is one that's kind of a sleeper. I don't know how many people use that anymore, but <clears throat> the original design or, or theory behind this was that if you're doing contract training again particularly, and you've got a list of students after the fact of here are all the 32 people from Aceware Industries who attended the safety class. <clears throat> you can go into speed entry. <clears throat> what that lets you do is pick the class, <clears throat> identify tracking code, a base fee. You can automatically build a group as part of it. You set the CEUs, hours, credits. You can assign them all a standard grade, pass if you want, put in the date the certificate was completed, <clears throat> and pick up at the top the, the method of name find entry you're going to, uh, to use. And you can either automatically load that name in the class without even having to confirm it. And if these are names that you're adding where you might be only adding a first and last name and no mailing address, you can default the do not mail flag to true. Uh, so again, uh, a great way to do, <clears throat> I don't know if we've got this on here, a great way to do uh, the after the fact entering in names of people from, from a contract program. Chuck, while we're on this screen, would you please point out the create group option there. Right. And this is over here on the on the top right. 
so that if you, if this was a situation where uh, you have 30 people in the class and the fee is uh, 300 bucks per person, and so you've got a $9,000 check you want to use to pay for this, then you would use Create Group. Uh, add those names, and then you could go back in after you've added all the names, go to one of the members of the group, and apply that $9,000 check. All right, anything else, Lori? That's it. I'm going to ask, show of hands, hands down, everybody, raise your hand if you have ever used speed registration. Alt-Z, zipper, zipper, speedy registration. Frida's been doing it. Good. Vicki, yes. Good, 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 good couple people anyway. All right. A few more helpful goodies. Um, again, this is primary, oh, this is um, only a relevance of to, to ASWEB. Actually, it's not. Uh, with, with privacy issues, one of the deals might, you might have in some cases is whether or not students, wants their, students want their name listed on a class roster. <clears throat> and I suppose you could use that uh, publish option whether or not you're using it on ACEWEB. But the intent of that is that if you're running ACEWEB, what you can do is be able to show who else is enrolled in this class uh, for people coming in. And I, uh, there is an example, I believe, in the ACEWEB demo. Let me see if I can get to the new site, www.try. Ace Web. When we're getting into examples, who's attending? Uh, am I keeping up with you display-wise, Cheryl? Yeah, you're doing. Or Lori, right. here we go. You're doing. Uh, show who else is attending. You can have a link to be able to say who else is in this class, and you be able to see. Uh, who else is in there? And apparently, I didn't have anybody else enrolled in that class who I gave permission to show. <clears throat> but that's basically, particularly if you've got things like association meetings where you have the old boys and girls that show up every time, and they're trying to it, it shame everybody else into making sure they attend this year's conference. Uh, so that's a nice, nice kind of item. Um, Removing an additional charge from the registration. You know, when you double click on the, uh, uh, an optional fee, it, it will remove it. Now it asks you to confirm that. So if you're accidentally double clicking, um, or if you want to right mouse click to edit the date, uh, you won't accidentally delete the additional charge. Don't want to group. Uh, there is an option to be able to turn off the grouping prompt. Uh, again, uh, to, to do the grouping of multiple registrations, uh, that's, a, that's an option on the, on the preferences screen. All right, we're just about ready for the full board Q&A here. Workshops, we, we didn't get a chance to spend much time talking about workshops, but uh, if you have workshop classes where you're wanting to be able to track breakout sessions within a conference, that's what this example would be. Uh, you've got three breakout sessions during the AA slot, three breakout sessions during the AB slot, and a student would, you'd enroll a student in one of the three, one of these three. Uh, basically, when you click on the workshop button on the registration screen, brings up all of the workshops that are available. All you would do is tick the two that the student enrolls in, and that would then add them to uh, their, their workshop selector. And again, there is help, pretty good detail on how the workshop system is set up and how you make that work. Catalog builder. We mentioned related classes uh, in the registration screen where uh, you're looking at registrations. You might want to do C also. If you have set up classes, uh, in the related course area on your class catalog, that's where the C also refers to. <clears throat> and again, that ties to ACE Web uh, as far as being able to let people on the web uh, point out to them classes that are similar to the one that you're looking at. Oh, we are on the money time. We shorted questions, 
but uh, we'll go ahead and start working through those. Lori, um, shoot away, fire away. Well, we don't have that many unless people just drown me in the next few minutes, so we're going <laughs> to go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, wait list. Is it okay. ordered alphabetically or by the date and time the person was waitlisted? All right. What do you think it ought to be? And that's a gimme question. The answer is it is sorted by the um, time and date of the registration. So it is chronologically sorted uh, so that the first one on the wait list is the first one that shows. Let me see wait list, wait list, if I've got some people on a wait list. Here's one right here, student manager. <clears throat> So if we were, I didn't get, here we go, it's wait list. So when I click on wait list, you'll see the first person on the wait list was added uh, this date at this time. The next person on the wait list was added this date this time. So it is chronological. All righty. Uh, Vicki wanted to know, is there any advantage to always creating a billing and then making the payment versus just creating a payment? Uh, I would say no, and again, unlike some systems, and if you're used to using uh, the classic double entry bookkeeping, always creates a billing record and then you make a payment to pay it off. Manager does not necessarily require that. Uh, my advice, is, and basically manager operates on generally a cash basis if you're an accountant. My daughters are. I'm not, so that's about all I know about it. But the idea is, if you have a student with cash in hand, they have a credit card, they have a checkbook, they have 300 bucks in cash, they're ready to pay for the class, don't create a billing. You've got the money. Just make the payment. So if Santa Claus has 300 bucks from gifts from his adoring uh, fans, have him go into payments, indicate how he's paying, cash, save it. Uh, whoa, no, we've got to put in the dollar amount, 300 bucks. Um, hit the save button and just make the payment and it is in the system. Uh, you don't, don't create an invoice. Uh, having, having said that, if there are special circumstances that you need to deal with, uh, we can talk about that, but uh, generally our policy suggestion is you just make the payment, click the money, it's in, it's done, you're taking care of it. Okay. Yay that we can uh, make the status field an open entry field. Can we also relabel it? Uh, can you do what? Relabel it. Uh, I think so. Let me take a look at that. Uh, registration. Uh, red status. Uh, no, you can't rename the. You can't label it. Um, you can. Here's the option now. I'm on the registration preferences. Uh, change it to validate. Now I'm going to turn off the validate. Um, so again, no, you can't. You can't relabel that thing. It's always going to say status, but I can put in there a nice guy. Oops, that's Mel Gibson. Maybe not. But anyway, uh, you can type that in. The label will still say whatever it is. But again, this is staff, so presumably this is not something related to the web. For the web, if you wanted to use it, obviously you can label it however you want. Uh, for staff, it's going to say status. You'll just communicate as part of your uh, training to your staff that this is where we're going to put certificate number. And where you see status, you're going to think certificate number, and you just type it in. I think we're done. We have four or five questions during the course of this. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got a few. Well, very good. Well, I, a good session, Lori, as always. Um, a good series, uh, a set of slides. Next week, I'll be gone, and Cheryl and Jason and Lori will be leading you through help and communications, and then we'll finish up in two weeks with coding. So, um, Lori, excuse my hiccups, thanks again for a good job of slides and a good job of moderating. Again, Candy would be proud of you. So, <laughs> uh, and again, for everybody else, remember, if you've got questions, feel free to email me or Lori or your tech, and we'll see you next week. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.